from Harold Newman Arena and beautiful University of Jamestown campus. This is the first and second round of the 2023 NAIA Men's Basketball National Championship presented by Bology. I'm Jaron Matheny. Glad that you are with us here on Jamestown 107.1 AM 1400 online at newsdakota.com and streaming with video. Jimmy Athletics on YouTube. If you want to watch these first and second round matchups today and tomorrow, Jimmy Athletics on YouTube is the place to watch and you can watch them for free hit subscribe when you head to jimmy athletics on youtube we open up the first round today in jamestown with a six versus 11 matchup the number six peru state bobcats at 24 and 7 on the year taking on the number 11 mayville state comets at 25 and 5 overall here at harold newman arena for the first round of the national tournament again jared Matheny, glad to be with you here on the gym and jimmy athletics on on YouTube, a pair of interim coaches to enter the season have led their teams into the postseason and in the national tournament. Head coach Roman Gentry on one side for Peru State has had that interim tag removed. Head coach Brandon McGruder for the Mayville State Comets is probably well on his way to having that interim tag removed for him. The Comets and Bobcats meeting here at Harold Newman Arena for the first time since the 2017-18 season season that was the lone matchup in this series history with Peru State winning at Mayville back in 2017 18 79 to 70 the Bobcats and Comets they score with some of the best of them across the NAIA and we will see that here in Harold Newman Arena this week three of the top 15 teams produ points production wise in the NAIA this season and the number one team in terms of points per game in the Mayville State Comets 92.8 points a contest for Mayville they are outscoring their opponents by 20 points this season, and they shoot the second best field goal percentage in the country at 53.7%. On the other side, for the Bobcats of Peru State, just under 85 points per game, which is 14th in the NAIA at 84.8. They shoot 52% from the floor, which is sixth best in the nation, and they're 11th best from long range at 38.8% on the season. Should be a really fun matchup in the national tournament in Environment here in Jamestown for the first time as the UJ men's basketball team will play at 7 p.m. against Bethel College out of Kansas. We've already had a couple teams eliminated from the national championships here today, and we've already had a buzzer beater inside the Kramer Quadrant. Let's take a look at what's happened so far in this first and second round. First round being played today, second round tomorrow, and then the round of 16, March 13th and 14th in Kansas City. The road to Kansas City and the Muni continues here today, as does the battle for the Red Banner. Pikeville out of Kentucky with our first upset of the day. Pike defeating Huntington University out of Indiana, which just so happens to be my hometown. Pike over Huntington, 71-66. to Tougaloo defeating Texas A&M, Texarkana by a final score of 75-65. to Loyola and Sagu currently squaring off, as well as LSU Shreveport and Thomas on that that side of the Naismith Quadrant. To the Kramer Quadrant, Ottawa, Arizona had our first buzzer beater of the day to move on to the second round with an 80-78 to victory over Baker University in Kansas and Oklahoma Wesleyan surviving against Concordia out of the GPAC. The Concordia Bulldogs from Nebraska, the number 15 seed taking on the number two seed in Oklahoma Wesleyan. They gave Oklahoma Wesleyan all they could handle, did Concordia and the Bulldogs had a chance late to win that game. A shot from Wyand from long range was just long and with less than two seconds to go Oklahoma Wesleyan hit a free throw, missed the second and a full court heave didn't go for the Bulldogs. So Oklahoma Wesleyan survives a scare and they are moving on to take on Ottawa out of Arizona tomorrow in the round of 32 for a spot in the round of 16. Indiana Tech defeating IU South Bend on their home floor in Fort Wayne, Indiana 82-57 to and Evan Evangel defeated Iowa Wesleyan 65 to 58. So it'll be Evangel taking on Indiana Tech in the second round tomorrow. Morningside knocked off Columbia out of Missouri earlier today, 81 to 77, and a good back and forth game. The Mustangs out of the GPAC are moving on. They'll play Kansas Wesleyan tomorrow as Kansas Wesleyan defeated IU Kokomo 82 to 63. Let's focus in now on this matchup today between the Mayville State Comets and the Peru State Bobcats. Peru State. 
four and seven overall, 17 and five in the heartland of American Conference this season. They lost in their conference championship 95 to 82 at William Penn. They were outscored by eight points in the second half and Malik Edwards of William Penn had 24 points as the Statesman also went 26 of 28 at the free throw line. Peru State shot 42% from the floor in that game, 37% from long range. They were led by their Division I transfer, David Winjet Jr., 22 points and four rebounds for Winjet Jr., who's a transfer out of South Dakota State to Peru State, playing his first game during the second semester of the season. The Mayville State Comets at 25 and five overall. They went 12 and two in the North Star Athletic Association this season, defeating Dickinson State 80 to 63 to cap off a regular and postseason championship for the Comets. The Mayville State women's basketball team has also made the NAIA National Championships on the women's side of things. They are also in action tonight, so we'll keep our eyes peeled for that. Mayville was 14 and two in home games this year, eight and two on the road, and three and one in neutral site play. The Bobcats 14 and four on their home floor, 10 and three away from home, and this will be their first neutral site game of the year, although the crowd could favor Mayville State here today as the Comets just had to make the two-hour trek compared to the eight-hour journey for Peru State to get here to Jamestown. We talked a little bit about the head coaches and the interim head coaches. Interim head coach for Mayville State, Brandon Magruder, in his first year, he was named the interim head coach on November 7th, and he's led the Comets to a 25-5 and overall record. He was tagged the interim head coach the week the season started for Mayville State. He did spend two years as an assistant at Peru State and that's where he started his coaching career so an extra chip on the shoulder for coach Magruder coming into play today on the other side Roman Gentry had that interim tag removed after his team's performance this season his former assistant at South Dakota during the 21 and 22 seasons and he spent seven years at Concordia St. Paul as an assistant a graduate from the University of South Dakota he averaged 17.6 points per game and this is a quite the coaching staff on the other side for both of these groups both interim coaches have done a wonderful job of getting their teams into this moment into the national tournament how often do you see that an interim head coach get a team this far and it's just really cool to see what coach Gentry and coach Magruder have done with their squads here this year we are a little bit less than 10 minutes away from tip off today between Mayville State and Peru State the Bobcats are led in scoring by Lorenzo Anderson a senior at six foot three out of Lithuania, Georgia. Anderson averaging 15.4 points per game this season. On the other side for Mayville State, Thomas Gieske averaging 16.2 points per game. He's a two-time first team all-conference member in the North Star and the North Star Player of the Year in the 2023 season. We'll see what Gieske can do in a very senior heavy bunch really on both sides uh, in this game. Gieske, that big senior name for Mayville State. He'll join the grad senior in Winder Joseph. And then one of the transfers, Juan Carlos Canajate. We'll talk a little bit more about him as we make our way throughout the broadcast today. Senior heavy lineup on the other side for the Peru State Bobcats. Lorenzo Anderson is senior. Troy Houghton is also a senior. Man Man Baker and Jabril Harris, all seniors in the starting lineup for Peru State. And it'll be a very, very intriguing matchup between the Bobcats and Comets to kick off our first round coverage here today. We'll have more first round coverage coming up after this one. The host team in the University of Jamestown, the Jimmies, taking on the Threshers out of Bethel College in a 3-14 and 14 matchup. But obviously, as we saw earlier today with Concordia, with University of Pike and Pikeville out of Kentucky beating Huntington, uh, anybody can win on any given day in the national tournament, especially when you get into this point. In the NCAA tournament at the Division I level, uh, you know, you have those matchups, and, and some teams, they come from different conferences, and, and some every conference at the Division I level gets an automatic bid, and then you get some teams who uh, really don't belong with the rest. In the NAIA, you have those automatic bids, but they're really 
really isn't as drastic of a difference between, okay, here's the number one team and the number one team this year and that number one overall seed belonging to the College of Idaho. And here's team number 64, whether it's Columbia International or Westcliff out of California or St. Xavier in Illinois. All those teams can play, and they can play with you on any given night. And if you're not ready to play your best basketball, then you can have some major problems in this national tournament. Uh, they're taking a look at the rim right now, are the officials currently, and standing at the free throw line to do so. And this is one of those things where you wish that everybody would have gotten out here in a little bit of a quicker fashion and taken a look at everything so that you can get games started on time. And that's the main thing with all this. You don't want to be behind schedule or anything like that. You want to be able to have everything set and ready to go. And we should have been looking at this before there's four minutes on the clock uh, before we're supposed to start tip off today. Just as easy as it gets there, we should be more than ready to go with play today. Rim should be set up and ready and everything else should have been fully prepared for this moment. And now we may see a little bit of a delay in our start time today between Peru State and Mayville State, which then potentially pushes back the start time of UJ and Bethel, our second game of the day. But right now we've got people underneath the rim looking at the basket and some people walking around the gymnasium here at Harold Newman arena with their hands in the air going are we are kidding me right now like this is the national tournament these things should be ready to go and we should not be wasting time uh, looking at the rim and seeing if it's off center or not as opposed to just everybody being out there and ready to play and that's uh, a hold up right now and it's something you see in the national tournament but something that should have been figured out before we're supposed to be three minutes away from tip off here today just how it shakes out, and we'll adjust from there. Again, it's the number three Jimmies, the number six Bobcats, the number 11 Comets, and the number 14 Threshers here in this Jamestown pod. And some other games already wrapping up today that we recapped. Other scores going across the first round currently. LSU Shreveport with a lead on Thomas in the final six seconds of play. Shreveport is up by a point. Indiana Wesleyan leading, leading Mid-America Nazarene. 56 to 46 in the second half. Rio Grande is leading Marion out of Indiana, 56 to 42, and St. Thomas on top of the Masters, 41 to 32. So Mayville State and Peru State, we are almost set for action here today. At least we thought so, and now we've got officials taking a look at the rim, and something is not correct. I don't know exactly what it is. They're looking up there, and I don't know if it's how the net is dangling or if it's off center in general if there's something underneath that is causing a problem uh, but right now the problem is the rim and the officials are looking at it and trying to get somebody out here to correct whatever the mistake and problem is it is the first round of the NAIA men's basketball national championship the battle for the red banner continues here today at Harold Newman Arena and the University of Jamestown campus we'll have full coverage of this tournament here on Jamestown Jamestown 1071 as well as Jimmy Athletics on YouTube. Make sure you hit that subscribe if you want to watch any Jimmy Athletic home games throughout the course of the rest of this season. They will be on this Jimmy Athletics YouTube page. And it looks like we are actually going to remove one of the rims potentially here or at least try to move it back so they can fix it. Uh, again, they're having some issues with the rim currently and something the officials came out and saw, and now we're adjusting the rim uh, at the time where we should have been tipping this game off, which is extremely frustrating for every side involved, not just the officials or people uh, covering the game here today or court side here today, but the teams who have been hyped up and ready to go and have been trying to play and they're, they're looking underneath the rim at uh, where the backboard, the orange soft cushion part lays underneath the backboard. There's a split in the middle of it, but it's been that way since I can remember and probably all year long here in Jamestown. Uh, and they'll look and evaluate the rim here and maybe tighten up 
They'll rim itself a little bit. Uh, but again, we had shoot around today. We had practices yesterday in this gymnasium. If something was wrong with the rim, you would have thought it would have been pointed out before we were ready to play a national tournament uh, game in the first round. But the officials came out and saw something they didn't like. And now they are adjusting the rim here at Harold Newman Arena. So we're going to step aside, take a break here on Jamestown 107.1. We'll come back and hopefully be ready for the national anthem and pregame introductions after this. It's the first round of the NAI Men's Basketball National Championship here from Jamestown, North Dakota and the University of Jamestown at Harold Newman Arena. Stick with us. We'll come back with first round action, hopefully right after this. On Jamestown 1071, we're going to go back to some more music. We're not sure how long this delay is going to be, and we'll come back as soon as we know something. But right now, we've got uh, officials standing underneath the bucket. Coach Peterson, uh, assistant head coach, associate head coach, the University of Jamestown, is underneath the rim right now. And we may be exchanging baskets, actually, and bringing a new one out here. And what that does to the warm-up process, I don't know. We may go into an entire new warm-up process for this as well. But again, I just don't understand how we didn't get somebody with an official look on this basket before now and why it's a problem all of a sudden after we've already gone through shoot arounds and practices the last two days here at Newman Arena. This gym has been occupied only for basketball in the last two days. So I, I don't know what the real issue is here or um, what the problem with the rim is. Maybe it's something that happened in warm-up when guys were going and throwing down dunks. Uh, I feel like that's probably unlikely that that changed throughout the process of the warm-ups, and it's more than likely on whoever is supposed to be going through and checking these things before the officials get here. Um, they're bringing out a level now, so maybe the discussion was it's not level on the back there, but uh, it seems to me that the Jimmy administration believes that this rim is level from what it looks like here. So uh, we'll go back to more music here on Jamestown 1071. We'll come back uh, when we have some news or when we can get started here with the first round of the NAI Men's Basketball National Championships coverage here on Jimmy Athletics and Jamestown 1071. Jimmy Athletics on YouTube. We'll keep the in-house feed going here and we'll keep you updated. Anything we know, we'll come back here on the gym and Jimmy Athletics on YouTube. Glad you're with us and a little bit of del a delay as we try to start play here today.
if you're just tuning in here on Jimmy Athletics on YouTube, Jared Matheny broadcasting here this Tuesday and Wednesday in the first and second rounds. Uh, we're having an issue with the rim currently and the cup off center potentially is what the officials were discussing. They brought out a balancer. I, I know that's not the proper term, but they uh, try to adjust it to make sure it's even across the top. I can say from looking over here that it looks like the rim is fine itself. Again, they've had practice in here. They've had shoot around in here the last two days. So I don't know why this has all of a sudden become an issue. Uh, but they're fixing the rim right now, and we'll just keep you updated. We'll have an update for you hopefully soon, and hopefully we'll get tip off here in the first and second round. Teams have warmed up. They're ready to go. I mean, this is a real, real problem. And I don't know who its shoulders it falls on, but, you know, somebody you would have thought that if there was a problem with the rim and a problem with the bucket before warm-up started here today, that somebody would have said it during practice or shoot-around within the last two days. But that's not the case, and now we're just waiting on an adjustment for the rim. So, uh, again, we'll keep you updated when we know more information. You'll have it as fast as we do.
back here on Jimmy Athletics on YouTube. Got an update for you. So what we're looking at right now is a bent rim. Uh, the sort of thought behind this is that whoever wrapped up the warm-up session on this side of the floor uh, went off with a dunk, and that is what bent the rim. They're saying it's off by an eighth of an inch currently. Um, so it's not on anybody who was looking at this. This is something that must have just happened before we got out to play here. And when the officials came out, they noticed that the rim was bent. So good on them for realizing that's the case. Um, and now they're just trying to go through the process of fixing this eighth of an inch to try and get everybody rolling once again. So um, I'm sure you can kind of see what's going on here. Jimmy Athletics on YouTube and what they're trying to do underneath and the bodies that are out there trying to fix this and resolve this issue. Uh, but we're looking at a bent rim right now and there's no necessarily a uh, timetable as to when this is going to be fixed and ready to roll for action tonight. So we'll, uh, again, we'll keep you up to date. We'll let you know what's happening as we do. And uh, hopefully this can be resolved. The Jamestown Civic Center is not available for use today. Uh, if they were thinking about trying to go somewhere else, potentially the Civic Center being used for Region 3 boys basketball this evening. And then the only other option would be Jerry Meyer Arena potentially at the high school, but then you're talking about getting everybody over there and, and changing plans all of a sudden, uh, and that delay is probably longer than the one we may have here, which they're just trying to fix what we're being told is a bent rim at the moment, uh, and they believe it happened right at the end of warm-ups here, um, and it wasn't something that was wrong for the past two days, so I kind of step back what I said a little bit earlier about nobody noticing because apparently nobody needed to notice because it wasn't an issue until uh, pregame warm-ups ended. So again, we're looking at a bent rim currently. They're trying to strip things free and then maybe they have a new rim or maybe they're just going to try and uh, fix this eighth of an inch difference right now is what they're saying is off with the rim. We'll have Peru State and Mayville State basketball coming your way here on Jimmy Athletics on YouTube as well as Jamestown 107 one in Jamestown uh, when this issue results resolves itself when this issue is resolved. Uh, again, there is no talk of anything being postponed as of right now here today, but they're just trying to fix a bent rim uh, on the left side of the floor as you see it online. Jimmy Athletics on YouTube, James Dow 1071 AM 1400 online at NewsDakota.com. I'm Jaron Matheny. We'll come back with more updates when we have them available to you. Again, we're looking at a bent rim right now inside of Harold Newman Arena and just trying to fix this issue that uh, apparently came to fruition at the end of warm-ups with a dunk and maybe that's something that needs to be discussed for moving forward further because uh, talking with Mark Eukstead who's been an official for a long time in this state of North Dakota for many many different sports who knows basketball out in this state I would guess about as well as anybody else uh, bent rim they don't make them like they used to sort of thing. And you've got guys who are more powerful right now dunking than anything else. So we'll come back with an update when we have one. Again, we're in a delay at the moment for a bent rim here inside Harold Newman Arena.
All right, it looks like our rim is fixed, so we'll go back through that process of putting it back together first and foremost. They're going to throw five minutes on the clock for an extended warm-up time now, uh, and then we'll have tip-off here. I would guess 525, we should be ready to roll for tip-off here at Harold Newman Arena today. Comets, take it on the Bobcats. We'll have coverage after this here on Jamestown 1071 and Jimmy Athletics on YouTube. All right, welcome back inside of Harold Newman Arena. It appears that our delay is over, although the officials are continuing to talk about the rim currently, standing at the UJ logo at center court and staring at the rim, which is located to your left if you're watching on the video side of things um, right now. I would say we're good and ready to go, but the officials continue to look at that rim, and there, there just seems to be an issue. It's bent. I think that's kind of as simple as it gets. It's not level across the top is the discussion they're having right now. Um, and is it is it good enough for there to be games played? And is this rim potentially going to bend if somebody goes up there and hammers one home uh, over the course of this game? I think that's, that's what's being talked about right now, and they're trying to figure out as a whole how to move forward. Uh, they're going to look again. 
got the level out to see if, you know, this is proper and, and good to go. And, and they're still just looking at the rim right now. And we are already 23 minutes delayed uh, from getting started here in the first round. So it's... It's interesting, it's more than likely, as it's been explained to me, that somebody dunking within this pregame warm-up uh, has evidently bent the rim, and that's what's causing the persistent issue right now. Do you allow guys to dunk during warm-ups? Maybe we shouldn't be allowing them to dunk during warm-ups uh, after what we've dealt with here today. I'll put the level up there again and see if it's ready to go, and if, if it is, then we'll have play today, and if not, we'll be delayed once again. The officials looking, talking with the coaches of Peru State currently, um, and now who knows what the resolution to this is, and if we're at a point where, you know, is this rim even viable to be played on here tonight, and if that's the case, then, you know, what's what's next? Like, what is the process next? Are, are we thinking about going to Jerry Meyer Arena over at the high school here for Jamestown, which is just down the road? Or um, that's really the only other option in Jamestown where you could play games right now because the Civic Center is currently booked up with Region 3 boys basketball. They continue to tilt the rim. Uh, to each side one way or another. Again, the discussion was it was an eighth of an inch off, uh, whatever direction it was off, and they unscrewed at the bottom, re-screwed this back together, and then they got the teams back on the floor. They set the five-minute warm-up time. Teams started to warm up, and uh, uh, as soon as Mayville State started to warm up, the officials pointed right back at the rim. So I got a feeling we might be in for a longer um, postponement here and delay than we were expecting and some of the Mayfield State guys are putting their warm-ups back on right now after they were sitting on the bench and trying to get ready to go and and, and how about this for a little bit of controversy for for Mayville State and Peru State I mean you're talking about guys who were out here at four o'clock getting ready to play at 5 p.m. the mental aspect of this that it takes to get over the fact that we're in a 25 minute delay right now uh, from when we were supposed to be started here today so uh, again this is not necessarily anyone with the University of Jamestown or the NAIA's fault it just appears that a player during warm-ups dunked the ball and when it went through it bent the rim and it's off by an eighth of an inch uh, one way or the other and they're trying to figure out, they've got the level out on top of it right now. They're screwing on the backside and, and just trying to figure out what this process is next. Uh, certainly not the way you'd want to start the first round of a national tournament, but uh, this is where we're at right now and what we're having to deal with. So uh, again, it looked like we were roaring and ready to go and everything was okay and now we're back at a point where we're fixing the rim again so we're not entirely sure of everything that's going on right now they may try to get somebody up there and dunk a basketball and see if you can move this rim at all and if they do I I, I kind of am at a loss for words right now as to what's going on here at Harold Newman Arena and you know how this happens now of, of all days. You know, it happens uh, last Tuesday in a GPAC championship. It's frustrating for sure, and, and it's delayed, and things are behind. Uh, national tournaments, a whole different story. So that's why they're taking it as seriously as they are and trying to tighten that rim on the back and taking out the level, making sure it's even across. Again, uh, the discussion that we heard was it's an eighth of an inch off uh, one way or the other, and the rim is bending right now. Uh, when you go up and make contact with it. So that's why we're in the delay. That's why we're paused right now. And that's why we're waiting for Mayville State and Peru State to tip off uh, with this delay. The University of Jamestown men's basketball game against Bethel will be delayed as well until we can get things rolling and underneath here. And now we'll have somebody for Mayville State test out the rim and see if it's A-OK -okay and ready to go. And it bends, but... Yeah, we got a major problem. Rim is bent. I mean, it looks center now. 
but you got a potential issue during this game that if somebody gets up there and dunks it, it becomes unhinged and then it's sideways. So they'll continue to look at the rim. That one looks okay. And I think we're ready for play. How about that? We'll have to keep a close eye on that throughout the game today. Um, we'll try to get a word from our officials here. We'll step back in just a moment. So we got an official word on what is happening with the rim here inside of Harold Newman Arena. So the discussion is it is loose and the rim bent in some way or another. Um, and if the rim comes unhinged and doesn't return to its original position after a dunk or something of that nature in this game, they're gonna have to stop the game and change out the rim. So we could be looking at a further delay uh, potentially, hopefully that is not the case. Bayville State and Peru State, first round here at Harold Newman Arena and the University of Jamestown. We thank our officials for taking the time and, and going through that with us. Looks like the Jimmies are getting ready to go just in case something does happen here today. Let's take a look at the starting lineups first for the Comets out of Mayville State. Coming in at 25 and 5 on the year. A grad transfer standing at 6 foot even from West Palm Beach, Florida. Number 5, Winder Joseph. A sophomore forward at 6 foot 5 from Australia. Number 10, Tane Mitchell. Also out of Australia, a 6 foot 3 sophomore guard. Number 12, Sebastian Griffin. Thomas Gieske is a 6 foot 3 senior guard from Minnesota. And Jamison Craig a six foot six junior forward out of Marion, North Dakota. For the Peru State Bobcats, starting lineup here today at guard, a senior at six foot four from Omaha, Nebraska, number one, Troy Houghton. Also at guard, a six foot three senior from Lithonia, Georgia, wearing number four, Lorenzo Anderson. At forward, a six foot seven junior out of Winnebago, Nebraska, number 10, David Winjet Jr. Man Man Baker is a six foot two senior guard out of Aurora, Colorado, and Jabril Harris a six foot eight senior forward from Chicago, Illinois. Head coach Roman Gentry for the Bobcats, interim head coach Magruder for Mayville. We're back after the anthem.
All right, so we are going to change the rim out right now. That's what's going to happen now. They're going to change the rim right now uh, to avoid any further hindrance in this game. So they've got a rim ready to go, and they're going to try and make this as quick as possible, change the rim out now, uh, as opposed to waiting until a little bit later to do anything with that. So the officials making that call. Let's change the rim out now, and that's exactly what they are going to do. They've got another rim locked and ready to go. They've got the twine nylon back there as well so they will unhinge this rim uh, and then we will hopefully be ready for play within the next 10 minutes or so we are still going to be behind schedule here today uh, but they are going to change the rim out entirely 15 minute delay perfect all right so we are in a 15 minute delay that's the expectation at least so the guys are going to go back to the locker room we're going to go back to the station here on jamestown 1071 jimmy athletics on youtube stay with us 15 minute delay is what the officials are calling it here we're going to change out the rim officially, and then we should have basketball after this. We apologize, folks, but this is kind of out of our control. Uh, hopefully, you'll stay with us the rest of the night. First round action here in the national tournament, Jamestown 1071 AM 1400, online at newsdakota.com, and here on YouTube, Jimmy Athletics. Uh, subscribe. If you're a Jimmy fan and you want to see all the home games for the rest of this year, again, we are in a 15-minute delay.
right here on Jimmy Athletics on YouTube. Jared Matheny, glad to be back with you. So we're going to have a 10-minute warm-up period here for Peru State and Mayville State, and then we will have tip-off following that. We've already gone through the introductions and starting lineup, so we will have tip-off following that. The officials saying, uh, obviously, they changed out the rim here. So that was the biggest issue, was a bent rim off about an eighth of an inch. Uh, and one of the officials just explaining to me, and, and I think he hits the nail right on the head, so to speak, here is just this is the national tournament. There's a lot at stake today. You have to make sure you get this right, and they're doing it. They're getting it right and making sure everything is ironed out. All the fine details are ready to go. So we'll be behind about 52 minutes once we get tipped off today, but we will have tip-off coming your way here in the next 10 minutes. Jamestown 1071 and Jimmy Athletics on YouTube. Here we go. We are almost ready for play at Harold Newman Arena for the first round of the NAI Men's Basketball National Championship presented by Bology here in this first and second round. Jamestown, the number three seed, Peru State, number six, Mayville State, number 11, and Bethel College out of Kansas, the number 14 seed. We'll be about an hour behind for our second game, so approximately 8 o'clock start time on the other side of things uh, for that UJ and Bethel game. We'll have coverage here the rest of the night here on Jamestown 107.1, as well as Jimmy Athletic on YouTube. I was not in any way trying to insinuate earlier that this was the official's fault that we were starting behind time. Uh, if anybody took that way, I, it, that way, I apologize. But um, just more the fact that within the last two days, there had been shoot around in here, practice in here. Heck, I had shot on these rims in the past two days in here and there hadn't been an issue. Well, turns out that somebody bent the rim during the last dunk of warm up. Um, and that's how we got to this point. The officials have done the right thing the whole time so um, again if somebody thinks I offended uh, anybody in the officiating department well I apologize for that but 
this is just something that you would have thought for a national tournament that it was ready to go and everything was set and ready. And that's the main argument that I have been trying to make here uh, tonight is just the fact that we're behind schedule now because of an issue that you would have thought more than likely could have been solved earlier. But if the dunk happened right at the end of pregame warmups, then, you know, that's what it is. And you have to kind of roll with the punches here and get ready to go. And the official just trying to do what's right for the integrity of the game here tonight uh, because this is the national tournament. And if, again, like I talked about, it's a GPAC postseason title. It's a little bit of a different story. Regular season game, I mean, maybe it's who, what, who cares at that point. Uh, but this is the national tournament. It's a different type of feel. And hey, here we go. Jamestown will be up at about 8 p.m. tonight. It's Mayville State and Peru State up first. Let's roll through those starting lineups one more time. First for the visitors on the scoreboard, the Comets from Mayville, North Dakota. 25 and 5 during the regular season, 12 and 2 in the North Star. Winder Joseph, a six foot even grad student, standing at six foot out of West Palm Beach, Florida. Tane Mitchell's a six foot five sophomore forward from Australia Sebastian Griffin at six foot three a sophomore guard also from Australia Thomas Gieske six foot three senior guard from Minnesota and then out of Marion North Dakota a six foot six junior forward number 35 Jamison Kramer on the other side for the Peru State Bobcats out of Peru North or Nebraska as opposed to North Dakota a six foot four senior guard wearing number one out of Omaha Troy Houghton also at guard, a six foot three senior from Georgia. Number four, Lorenzo Anderson out of Winnebago, Nebraska. Six foot seven junior forward wearing number 10, David Winjet Jr. Man Man Baker, a six foot two senior guard from Aurora, Colorado. And Jabril Harris, a six foot eight senior forward from Chicago, Illinois. A couple of games have already wrapped up uh, since we got on the air, actually. We've had a couple games come to a close as well so we'll run through the updated list of what games have wrapped up here already today. The University of Jamestown women's basketball team is headed out onto the floor in Helena, Montana for their opening round matchup. Good luck to the Jimmy women. will be cheering you on from here. So some final scores. LSU Shreveport defeating Thomas out of Georgia. 107 to 104 in overtime. That is a final score. Shreveport survives and they take down the 12 seed. Shreveport will now play Pikeville tomorrow in the second round. Other final Final scores, Rio Grande defeated Marion out of Indiana, 79-75. to Indiana Wesleyan defeating Mid-American Nazarene, 78-70. to We've got some other games going on right now. St. Thomas defeating the Masters. That game officially going final. St. Thomas victorious, 84-61. to The 10 seed takes down the 7 seed in Lakeland, Florida. Florida College and Life will play next. So 84 61, the final score there. Southeastern's currently up on Union, 70 to 56. That would be uh, a pretty big upset in the opening round if Union were to go down. Union. Just trying to make sure that that score is actually correct. Union, the sixth seed. Southeastern, the 11 seed. So that'd be a little bit of an upset. Grace is on top of Columbia International, 55 to 36. And Wayland Baptist and Antelope Valley are tied at 46 with 11 minutes to go in the second half. We are ready for action finally here at Harold Newman Arena between Mayville State and Peru State. The Comets and the Bobcats in this first round matchup in the NAIA. I do not believe we'll go through the start introductions again. I think we'll get everybody out on the floor here and tip off on the UJ logo about 50 minutes past when we were scheduled to, but we will still have basketball today and still doubleheader basketball at that between Jamestown and Bethel. That's next. Mayville State and Peru State up first. So the Bobcats in their all-white uniforms, blue lettering and numerals, Mayville State, blue and whites, Blue jerseys, white numerals, and lettering. Checking around with the officials to make sure everybody's ready to go. All right, let's do it. First round from Jamestown at Harold Newman Arena. The Bobcats and the Comets. 
in the national tournament. Houghton wins the opening tip for Peru State. Man Man Baker chases it back down towards the other baseline. We are underway. Bobcats operating from right to left. Mayville State from left to right. Baker into the corner. Winjet goes to the baseline. Dribbles downhill once again on the baseline, gets underneath, reverse lay-in, goes for two, and Peru State's on the board first, two to nothing. Now let's look at this Mayville State offense, 92.8 points per game, best in the NAIA this season. Screen set to the right side by Kramer. Downhill drive in the left alley for Sebastian Griffin. He goes up against Houghton, steps through, right-handed hook shot. Banks in and down for two, and we're even to a piece. 45 seconds into the first half of play. Coach Magruder on the other side for Mayville State. Coach Gentry for Peru State. Two former interim coaches to start the year. Still the interim tag on Coach Magruder, but you got to feel like that'll be removed here shortly. On the left wing, Anderson driving down inside against Gieske. Kick out up top. Winjet steps in. Back to the left corner. It's a three on the way for Anderson. Rims off. Loose ball. Man Man Baker got his hands on it. Pokes it for it's an offensive rebound for Peru State. 18-45 first half, even at two. Baker, volleyball line flipped off to the right. Houghton curls it back towards the top. Jabril Harris handing off for Winjet. Right elbow, jab step, pull up, jump shot is through for Winjet. The Division One transfer into Peru State has his first bucket, four to two. Bobcats in this first half of play, just under 18 and a half minutes to go. Left side on the drive is Griffin. Hand off for Gieske, the conference player of the year in the North Star this season. Tap free, out up top, and then recollected by Griffin. Ten on the shot clock. Griffin looking back down. Gieske missed that reverse lay-in opportunity. It's picked up on the glass by Harris for Peru State. Baker up ahead. Houghton on the inside. Dribbles straight into the paint. He spins to the left, and we got a reach-in foul on Joseph before the shot. Foul comes on the floor. 18-02, first half, 4-2. Bobcats leading the Comets. Man Man Baker underneath the cup will inbound for Peru State. Baker averaging 6.6 .6 assists per game this season. And he's had more than, he's had four games this year with 10 or more assists. Left elbow jumper too strong for Harris. Joseph on the board, pushing the other way for Mayville State. Joseph downhill, goes straight to the rack, lays it in with the left hand on the right block, and we're tied up at 4, 17-45, first half. Good attack here. Bobcats with a basketball, right wing. Anderson kicks back out up top for Winjet. The dump down on the inside for Harris. Goes up, missed the lay-in, ball tap free and picked up by Tane Mitchell. Bobcats were looking for a foul on that last play. Mitchell into the right corner, fed up top and all the way around the arc left side. Head fake from Griffin. He drives straight to the cup, down for two. And Mayville State has their first lead. Comets six, Bobcats four, 17-10, first half. Should be fun here between Peru State and Mayville State. Number six and number 11 squaring off in Jamestown. Into the right corner, Houghton dribbles inside the paint. Left-handed lay-in goes, plus the foul. And Troy Houghton is headed to the free throw line. 63% from the floor this season for Houghton. His tops on the Bobcats roster, although he is a 52% free throw shooter. So an and one free throw coming for Houghton. 17 minutes exactly in the first half, six to six. And Houghton with an and one free throw upcoming. Long pause here, one dribble, free throw, too strong. And on the glass, it's Kramer from Mayville State. We're tied up at six, three minutes into the first half of play here on the first round of the NAI Men's Basketball National Championships. Top of the key, Joseph works it around left wing. Mitchell with a touch back up top and around to the right wing. Joseph, little stutter step action, gets a screen, goes back towards the middle. Now Mitchell driving downhill, rather Griffin kicking out for Joseph. Mitchell at midcourt saves the ball. Shot clock to three and two. Griffin's got to get it off. He is fouled. Oh, no, we got to travel before the horn and the foul. Turnover by Mayville State. And the first turnover by the Comets today. Mayville State just under 15 turnovers per game. Peru State at 12 a contest. Coach Gentry calling out the play from the far side of the floor. Man-man Baker handing off for Houghton up top. 
Dribbles the ball on the floor, bounce pass inside for Winjet. Faces up, Winjet, one step, spins, fade away from the middle, about 10 feet out, too strong off the heel. Joseph collects on the glass, Mayville State basketball, operating from right to left from where you're viewing on Jimmy Athletics on YouTube. Downhill look is through for Sebastian Griffin. How in down to the floor, don't know if it could have been a charge, a block, or a flop, nothing called. Mayville State regains the lead, eight to six Comets here in the first half. Looking down inside, it's a pull-up jumper from 15 instead. Contested look for Lorenzo Anderson and cleaned up by Mitchell. Comets basketball. Mayville State leading 8-6. Griffin going to work again. Nobody stops him as he goes straight inside. Timeout for Peru State. And right now it's too easy for Sebastian Griffin. He's just getting downhill and nobody's stepping in the lane. Griffin's got six points already. And the Comets lead 10-6. 15-32 first half. But Griffin with eight points. Four for four from the floor. Mayville State 5 of six to start this game. And the Comets lead 10-6. 15-32 first half. Just a 30-second timeout. So we'll keep it right Right here, Jamestown 1071 in Jamestown, where you can listen to this game locally. You can also find us on your app store. Just search for Jamestown 1071. Or if you're listening and you want to watch this game, Jimmy Athletics on YouTube. Jimmy Athletics on YouTube. If you want to find this one, make sure you subscribe. 10 to 6, Mayville State, 15-32, first half. It's Peru State basketball out of the 30-second timeout for Coach Gentry. In the Comets, in more of a home environment here, just two hours away from Mayville. Peru State making the eight-hour journey up here to Jamestown. Winjet dumps down to the right elbow. Baker faces up, dribbles inside. Got a poke free by Joseph, and the Comets pick up the ball, headed out the other way. Windsor Joseph giving up for Tane Mitchell. Now it's Griffin on the right wing. Dribbles to the opposite side of the floor on the same wing. Hand off, Gieske, catch and shoot Trey, and it is too strong. Baker on the glass, hand off and shoot Trey, I should say, for Gieske. Ski there. Under 15 minutes to play, first half, 10 to 6, Mayville State in front. Dump down inside of the baseline, left. Houghton dribbles in against Griffin, kick out up top, Baker for three, cash it. Man, man, Baker from the outside makes it 10 to 9, Mayville State on top of Peru State. 14-35, first half. Hand off of the left wing, Gieske pass up top, was deflected by Anderson, taken away, and then Joseph reaches in, picks up a personal foul, and that is the second personal on Windsor Joseph. Third team foul on the comments. Joseph will probably have to sit for the rest of this first half, and that's a big miss defensively. A steal and a half per game this year for Winder Joseph. Juan Carlos Canajate is on for the first time for Mayville State. Canajate, part of the reason why Coach Magruder is even at Mayville State. He played for him at Central Arizona in Juco Ball. Called him up, said, Coach, might be an offering. Charge, we're headed the other side as Houghton barrels into the chest of Mitchell. First foul on Peru State, and it's charged to Troy Houghton, the senior guard out of Omaha. J.C. Kanahate played at Central Arizona College, where Coach Magruder was at for six seasons. Told him to apply for the job, and as quickly as he applied, he had the interim position, and now the Comets are in the postseason. Peru State's got a similar story this year. Some interim coaches doing great work. Gieske goes all the way down, left block, spins inside against Winjet, lays it up for two, 12 to nine. Comets in front of the Bobcats, 14 minutes to play in the first half. Anderson screen right from Winjet, dribbles inside the paint, little runner action, couldn't be banked home, rolled off, Gieske ahead for Kanahate, out of the Dominican Republic, Kanahate dribbles to the left elbow, kick out right corner, extra pass up top, Griffin downhill again, and nobody's stopping Sebastian Griffin, he cuts straight inside, 10 points for Griffin, 5 of 5 from the floor, I think all five looks have been right at the rim for layup opportunities. 14 to nine, Mayville State. Savon Taylor's on the floor for the first time for the Bobcats inside Anderson, got stripped free. We got a foul coming. And you'll hear the Boo Birds out at Newman Arena. Good Mayville State base is in this gymnasium here today. And again, the comments did not have to make a very far journey to get here. Foul tag to Gieske, his first in the 14 foul. Lorenzo Anderson at the free throw line, 71% this year for Anderson. Again, 
goes through his process at the line. Works through the free throw, and the first one gets the soft touch to roll through. Anderson, nine points and an assist against William Penn in the Heart of America Conference Championship game. Transfer from Judson University. Another deep breath from Anderson. He'll take his time on these free throws. Second is up and got them both. 14 to 11, Mayville State with a lead on Peru State. Man Man Baker with some pressure in the backcourt against Kanahate. Screen left from Mitchell, and Mayville State's into their offensive set. Jameson Kramer, top of the key, out towards the right corner. A look for Mitchell. Pushed up to the top of the key for Griffin. Faces up at the volleyball line midway through the shot clock. 13 minutes to go, first half. Inside, running action, kick out to the left corner. Gieske downhill, baseline, slam! Thomas Gieske attacks the rim and hammers one through. 16 to 11, Mayville State. Man Man Baker up the other side, plus the foul. Lay in goes, and the Bobcats can bring it back to a two point ball game as Baker hits the line for an and one. Thomas Gieske showing the verticality on the left baseline. Out and back into the game for Peru State as Trailer goes to the bench. Man Baker at the free throw line shoots the and one. It's been mostly the starting fives out there, though some foul trouble has changed some things up. Mayville State has gone 10 deep this year. And one free throw is off for Baker, 16 to 13 comments. Peru State, they like to sit in that eight to nine range. The old Pat Riley saying in the playoffs, you trust seven, play eight. Fadeaway jump shot is blocked from Griffin. Houghton and the Bobcats running the other way. Houghton kicks out left wing, Anderson into the left corner, downhill action on a look back to the corner Anderson to the top Skyler Wilson is on for Peru State right side drive Baker into the paint back out for Wilson in the left corner he dribbles in pull up inside a 10 missed it off the heel and picked up by Mayville State 12 10 first half and counting 16 13 comments on top kind of hot day turns onto the baseline spins inside got Baker off his feet plus the foul JC Kahate. 7.2 points per game. And the transfer has made a name for himself with the comments this season. 63% at the charity stripe this year. He heads to the line. Kramer out. Trent Blackshire is on the floor for the first time for Mayville State. He averages 11 and a half points off the bench this year. Kind of hot day at the free throw line. Free throw is good. 19-13 Mayville State. Kanahate with some full court pressure against Man Man Baker. And now he'll retreat as Baker hustles across the timeline. Under 12 minutes to play first half. Comets up by six on the Bobcats. Here in the first round of the national tournament. Inside drive and Gieske slid over. Tried to take a charge, but Anderson slides past him. Lays it up right-handed and through. Kanahate quickly up the other side of the floor. Backs down to the right block. Blackshire on the opposite side. They'll dump in for him right block now. Blackshire turns, puts it up, too strong, and off the long side, Winjet with a rebound. Anderson throws the long horns in the air or the bison horns if you're here in Jamestown. Spin move underneath. Anderson had it poked free. Ball on the floor. After it is Mitchell. He picks it up, and he is able to get a timeout. So Mitchell gets the loose ball. Timeout for Mayville State. We'll take the break with them. 11-16 first half, 19-15. Mayville State in front. We're back in 30 seconds to Newman Arena. Mayville State leading Peru State here in the first round of the NAIA Men's Basketball National Championship presented by Bology. 
Comets with the basketball out of the 30-second pause. Kind of hot day across the UJ logo here at Newman Arena. First of two games tonight on Jamestown 1071 and Jimmy Athletics on YouTube. There will be another link for the next game. Kind of hot day dribbling inside the paint. Dumps down on the backside. Gieske trying to spin around his defender, and it's a blocking foul on Jabril Harris. Just tried to get around his hips there, did Gieske. That is the third team foul, and the first on Harris. In for Mayville State is Jock Safra. Safra out of Zurich, Switzerland. They've got some international talent on this Mayville State roster. Kanahate. Bounce pass in for Gieske was tapped out of bounds by Harris. 20 on the shot clock for Mayville State. 10.57 first half. It's 19 to 15 Comets in front. Gieske on the floor with Kanahate as well as Safra. Blackshire in the game with Mitchell. Anderson, Baker on the other side for Peru State as well as Houghton, Harris, and then Skyler Wilson. All tapped out of bounds again and will stay with the Comets. 15 on the shot clock. So far for Mayville State just Three guys off the bench, top of the key, and worked around the arc left. Kanahate, little head fake. Dribbles, step back, take the three, and splash! Kanahate has six early points, and Mayville State leads 22 to 15 on Peru State. Win Jet back to the scorer's table for the Bobcats. Peru State basketball, Baker off a screen left from Houghton. Back up top, top of the key three for Harris. Strong, loose ball, picked up by Gieske. Fights for it on the rim. Kanahate Hate trying to push up the floor for the Comets. Handing off left side. Mitchell back towards the top of the key. Gieske back for Mitchell. Driving in right alley. Ball poked free back towards the top. Got a hot day. Picks it up. Bodies hit the floor for Peru State. Blackshire dribbles in. Kick right corner. Open look from three for Mitchell. And he's fouled on the three as Howland just picked up his second personal. Three free throws upcoming for Tane Mitchell. And the closeout by Houghton just got into him. He's not happy with the call still. And that'll send Mitchell to the line for three. First free throw is through. Tane Mitchell, 58% clip this season from 15 feet out uncontested. It's actually the first no, that is the second foul charge to Houghton. Just took a second for things to get caught up in venue here. Second free throw for Mitchell. Hit them both. One more upcoming. Save on trailer back into the game for Peru State. Winjet also back on the floor. Danilo Da Silva is in for the first time for Mayville State. Third free throw upcoming for Mitchell. And he goes a perfect three for three. Mitchell will check out. Dylan Beck is into the game for the first time. So Mayville State going to that 10 deep look. Talk with Coach Magruder before the game today. He says we really have two groups. That first and second unit, we think we can play five guys at any time out of that 10. Top of the key, Winjet looked towards the back door instead. Left wing, Baker around a screen. Back to the right side, dumps down low for Winjet. He spins on kind of hot day. Left-handed finish, banks it in for two. 25 to 17, midway through the first half, Mayville State in front of Peru State. Handoff, back towards the top for Safra. Looking left side, back door cut, and at the rim, Blackshire goes reverse lay-in. Spin was crazy on it, but missed everything. Winjet up the floor, fake on the right wing three for Anderson. He dribbles inside, creates the contact, draws the foul on Dylan Beck, and two free throws now upcoming for the Bobcats on the other end, and David Winjet Jr. Anderson headed to the free throw line as Winjet Jr. was looking at his elbow there after the play. Lorenzo Anderson, third and fourth free throws upcoming today. First attempt, rims through. 25-18 Mayville State, five points early for Anderson. Here the count start. 
Second free throw. Got them both. 25 to 19. Mayville State leading Peru State. Nine minutes, 20 seconds in the first half. Baker facing up with Kanahate across the timeline. Top of the key. Dylan Beck around left and now back up top to Silva with a look. Kanahate midway through the shot clock. Right wing dribbling downhill. Stops inside the left elbow. Now in the paint. Dumps off to the right side. Dribbling to Silva. Left handed finish off the right block for Danilo De Silva who averages below two points per game. That's production you'll take if you're Mayville State trying to work your way towards that 93 average a contest. Down low, Winjet help comes from the Comets. Anderson cuts to the cup, lays it up off the assist from Winjet. 27-21, Mayville State 8:40 first half. Hand off towards the right wing, kick into the left corner. Blackshire, double team help comes. Stops for Mayville State. Blackshire flips it back out up top to De Silva. Midway through the clock again. Kanahate off a screen left, dribbles, dumps it back to the right side. Dylan Beck goes underneath, left-handed lay-in on the reverse. Good for two more. Comets are scoring at quite the pace already. 29-21, Mayville State. It is fun here inside a Newman Arena. Glad that you are with us. Pull-up jumper for Anderson is too strong. Tapped out to the left corner. Back up top, Winjet Jr. for three and good. David Winjet Jr. hits another. Winjet Jr. with nine early points for Peru State. Anderson's got eight. 29-24, and now a reach-in foul on Anderson. One-on-one one free throws for Mayville State. Oh, that's actually the sixth team foul. Officials signaled for the one-and-one, one, but it's not to the bonus yet. Safra inbounding in front of the Bruce State bench. In for Dylan Beck. 20 to work offensively, just under eight minutes first half. Mayville State leading by five. Kanahate steps through the right block, poked free by Baker, back towards the top, 10 to work. Kanahate gets a screen right from Dylan Beck. Dribble straight inside and again, right to the rim. Nobody stops him in the middle of the lane. 31-24, Mayville State, 7.35 first half. Anderson, after a screen from Harris, creates the switch. They'll go down inside to Harris. He bangs the bodies inside. Missed the easy lay-in, though. And on the backside, it's De Silva with a defensive rebound. De Silva up the floor. Dribbles straight into the paint again. Goes to the rim. Too strong on the lay-in. Harris picks it up, flips it ahead. Could be numbers here for Peru State. Winjet left. Baker into the corner. Up fake. And then poked free. Blackshire poked it out of the hands of Trailer. It'll stay with the Bobcats. 31-24, Mayville State, 7-12 first half. Possession arrow favors the comments on a jump ball. 16 fouls for Mainville State, five for Peru State. And the officials taking a look at Dylan Beck and Harris here. Maybe some jawing between the two. This is the national tournament. Don't expect anything less. Out on the left wing, man man Baker holding. Kanahate's been in there a long time. Baker dribbles inside and fouled by Dylan Beck. He came down that left hand across the top of the right arm of Baker. And now man man Baker headed to the free throw line. The season high 25 points against William Penn this year. William Penn winning the Heart of America Conference, the regular and postseason title. Baker, first free throw is through. Makes it 31 to 25. Southeastern defeats Union 82 to 76. That is a final. Antelope Valley right now up on Wayland Baptist with under a minute to play, 70 to 65 there. Take a full look at the bracket at our halftime break. Baker, one for two at the line. 31-25, Comets, seven minutes to go in the first half. Kanahate up the far side of the floor. Right swing, they go inside to De Silva and a reach-in foul before the fact. It's the sixth team foul on Peru State. Sixth team foul on Peru State. So still no free throws here for Mayville State. Kanahate inbounding underneath the cup. Looked right corner, instead pass to the free throw line to Silva, backs it out. 
Sent out to the near side on the wing. They'll dump down high over the top for Dylan back. He got pushed and then missed the left-handed lay-in. Surprised we didn't see a whistle there. Very physical on the inside on that end. Anderson stepped through. Help from Dylan Beck got a partial block. Anderson puts it back up, missed it. Loose ball. Dylan Beck grabs it and then throws it off of his defender, Christian Tedian, on the floor for the first time for Peru State. Ball goes off of him. It's Mayville State basketball, 627 first half. 31-25 comets on top. And right now it feels like this is kind of more of Mayville State style of play. It hasn't been as quick as I expected it to be, though that's a quick pull from the right wing, comes up front iron short from Safra. Peru State seems to be a little bit more controlled on the offensive end. Baker left wing, works towards the top of the key. He'll step into the tray from deep, missed it off to the right. Anderson offensive rebound, dumps right back down inside. Tedian is fouled, and Christian Tedian to the free throw line for two attempts. Maybe not the worst foul here for Mayville State, though. Tedian is just a 29% free throw shooter this year. Foul on Blackshire's his first. That's the eighth team foul on the Comets. Six minutes, first half, 31-25, Mayville State in front. Tedian with an and one free throw, or with a first free throw here, excuse me. First one rattles through. 29% at the line. Anyone you can get here is big on the other side for Peru State. Bobcats as a team, just over 68% on the season. Joseph with two personal fouls coming in for Kanahate, so we'll keep an eye on that. Houghton has remained on the bench for Peru State with his two personal fouls. 31-26. Tedian second free throw. He gets them both. So nice on that side of the floor for Peru State to get two from Tedian. Just under six minutes to go in the first half. 31-27. Backdoor look. Runner shorts from Safra. Baker spin cycle to get across the timeline. 540 first half, Comets lead by four. They've led for a majority of this first half of play, but it feels like Peru State's just a couple buckets away from breaking through on a run. Winjet spins, left block, finishes over the top. Winjet looking for the and one as well. Won't get it here. 31 at 29, Mayville State in front. A nice run here by the Bobcats to bring it back to a possession. Gieske, weave action up top, handoff, Joseph right wing deep, three is through. Winder Joseph from the outside. 43% from long range is tops on the Mayville State roster. You gotta get a hand in his face. And Coach Gentry knew that from the sideline. Baker back right, looked in the corner. Tedian gets it on the inside, goes up against Dylan Beck, left it short, put back, he's fouled. And now Dylan Beck picks up another personal. That'll put Kramer back into the game for the Comets. Sebastian Griffin also at the scorer's table. And Wilson there as well. 455 first half. Tedian at the line shooting two. Sophomore out of Council Bluffs, Iowa. Three for three at the line. Subs in for both sides. Wilson returns to the floor. Tedian's got three points all at the free throw line. Tedian's second free throw, and he goes one for two on this trip. Kramer with the rebound off the miss. 34 to 30, Mayville State in front of Peru State. Gieske turns the corner right on the baseline, filters inside for Kramer, missed the short lay-in. Loose ball picked up, a jump ball, and possession staying with the Comets. So Mayville State basketball underneath the bucket. Mayville State kind of right near that pace of play where they like to be, 93 points a game on average. Blackshire up top, off for Joseph. And now towards the right wing, Kramer. Out of here in North Dakota, underhand toss, Gieske dribbles right alley, hangs in the air, banks it in for two. Gieske with a tough bucket, 36 to 30, Mayville State. 
and Tedian, and just double check there, 29% of the free throw line this year, but he's three for four today. Winjet to the right wing, curling around a screen, trailer, filters back up top, Tedian for three, just rims out, loose ball, Joseph after it, picked up on the floor, and now inside, easy left-handed lay-in goes for trailer. Mayville State, that's an opportunity they'd like to have back, 36 to 32, Comets. Towards the left wing, Blackshire stops at the elbow, look down, right block, hands off towards the corner, loose ball, turned over, TD and up the floor, hands back off for Wilson, skip pass all the way to the left wing, Winjet, head fake, dribbles behind his back, goes down low, charge, we're headed the other way. He just barreled into the chest there of Griffin. Griffin was low down inside of there, but just outside the restricted area. 337 first half, 36-32, Winjet's first personal. Peru State right now, 42% from the field. Mayville State, 60% from the floor. Both teams with two made threes. Bobcats taking advantage of the free throw line, eight of 12. Seven combined turnovers. Offensive rebounds, plus three for Peru State. Anderson back into the game for the Bobcats. Wilson to the bench. Four-point Mayville State lead, 335 first half here at Newman Arena. Tuesday night in the first round of the national championship. Battle for the red banner. Spin inside, Gieske underneath goes up against Winjet and missed it as Winjet contested him off the backside. Baker quickly up the floor, just goes straight into the paint. Now backs it up towards the top of the key between the two circles, screen left from Harris. No switch defensively for Mayville State. 15 on the shot clock. Baker curls it into the corner right. Anderson dribbling through traffic. Right hand missed the initial finish, gets the rebound, put back to go, and it's back to a two-point ball game. Comet's still in front, but Mayville State right now, knowing that, hey, Peru State breaks through that barrier, they may have a chance to just go. Inside, Gieske, back towards the top of the key. Griffin, right alley, back down underneath. Gieske, help came late, and a foul. And it may be on Anderson. It is, and that is his second. So Anderson, two personal fouls. Houghton has two personals. And it's free throws for Gieske. 73% this year for the North Star Player of the Year. First one in and out. Tane Mitchell. Back in for Blackshot. 240 first half, 36 34, Mayville States. Gieske goes one for two. Three point lead for the Comets. Some full court pressure from Joseph against Baker. Joseph does have two personal fouls. Got to be careful here. Anderson, top of the key, back to the left wing. Three for Harris, short, and nice rebound on a left-hand extension for Griffin. Bodies hit the floor. Comets one of the foul in the fan section behind us. Mitchell, rather Griffin, spinning inside. Went long, then Joseph gets the takeaway. Comets pushing downhill. Gieske inside, spins, missed the lay-in. Put back is through for Griffin. Sebastian Griffin has has 12 points, he leads all scorers. Two minutes to go, first half, Mayville State 39, Peru State 34. Baker meanders across the timeline, waiting for him to hit the Jets downhill one time. Top of the key, deep look for Trailer, rims out, and on the glass again is Mitchell. Joseph scans the floor as he crosses the center logo. Dribbles right side, straight inside for two. Timeout, Peru State. Mayville State feeling it a little bit here at the tail end of the first half, and the Bobcats know you got to make sure this stays within single digits in the deficit column. 41-34, Mayville State leading Peru State. Minute 38 to go in the first half. We're back with the rest of the first half right after this.
31-34, Mayville State leading Peru State here in the first round of the NAIA Men's Basketball National Tournament. Comets on top by seven, just under 100 seconds to go in the first half. Peru State basketball out of the full pause for the Bobcats. Baker, double screens up top. They vacate. Baker trying to dribble in against Joseph. Spinning downhill. Joseph picks up the foul plus the bucket, and that's the third on Winder Joseph. And Man Man Baker just attacking him that time. And no help defensively from Mayville State. They just let him go one-on-one, -on -one, backed him all the way down. And that's a third personal and a big one at that for Joseph. He checks to the sideline. They're going to leave him in here for the final 124. Baker at the line and one free throw. Got him to go. It's 3-0 possession there. The and one free throw going for Baker. Some stunted full court pressure for the Bobcats. Mayville State breaks it. Sebastian handing off for Joseph as we trickle down towards a minute to go in the first half. Kramer goes screen left. Joseph goes to the right side instead. Hangs in the air. Missed the lay-in opportunity from about 10 feet. Baker and the Bobcats up the floor. Winjet towards the right corner. Ball poked in the air by Gieske. Winjet up. Fake. Kick out left. Baker dumped down inside. Good position for Trailer. He spins. And the easy right-handed lay-in through. 41-39 Mayville State. A 5-0 run out of the timeout by the Bobcats. And now we've got a full timeout coming for the Comets. 48 points six seconds to go in this first half and that one minute right there was huge for Peru State before the break as the Bobcats just put themselves in position to potentially tie this game or even take the lead before the end of the first half and now some of the cause for concern for Mayville State will be Winder Joseph Picking up his third foul. He's their best three-point field goal shooter this year at 43%. But I think more importantly here for Mayville State, you gotta find a way on this side of the floor to get a bucket and, and maybe you're looking two for one in addition to that. But you gotta got you gotta have a bucket and a stop to feel like you really were in control of this first half because the comments kinda have been in control of the first half of play. Peru State hasn't been out of it by any stretch of the imagination, but Mayville State's had the lead for a majority of this first half. And for Peru State, you're looking for one stop and one score. And if you're tied at halftime or even have a one point lead, I mean that is a big win for the Bobcats. Just because this first half they've dealt with some foul trouble of their own. Houghton hasn't been in the game, although Anderson with two personal fouls is in here. Some stunted full court pressure coming from Peru State. And if you're Mayville State right now, why don't you just do exactly what Man Man Baker just did to you? Attack. Attack Anderson. That's what you got to try and do here. Inbound comes to the far side of the floor. Back for Mitchell. Mitchell and Griffin across the timeline. It's Mayville State a little bit slowed down here, and that'll create just one last shot for Peru State. Mitchell, left wing, skip pass all the way right. Kramer, catch and shoot three, short, rebound to Baker. And the shot clock, about a half second difference here at the end of the first half. Bobcats want to drain the rest of this first half clock if they can. Baker on this far side, dribbles past Mitchell, gets into the paint, kick out, Winjet, right wing three for the lead and through. And the Bobcats lead by one. Final seven seconds of the first half. Kanahate dribbling inside, flips it back out. Two seconds and one, runner at the horn, short on the lay-in attempt for Griffin. And at the end of the first half of play, here in the first round of the national championships for men's basketball, the NAIA, Peru State leading Mayville State 42 to 41. We'll come back in four minutes with your first half stats here from Harold Newman Arena. Mayville State led a majority of that first half of play, but Peru State takes control late, and now the Bobcats have a one-point lead at the end of the first half.
first round action here at Harold Newman Arena in the NAIA Men's Basketball National Championship. Jaron Matheny, glad to be with you. First round today, second round tomorrow at 6 p.m. here in Jamestown, and then we'll head to Kansas City after that, March 13th through the 18th as the road to the Muni continues. Halftime stats here as Mayville State trailing Peru State, 42 to 41 at the break. The Bobcats with a late run at the end of that first half to take the lead and really Peru State they called that timeout with a minute 38 to go and they go on a 10 to 2 run after that point to head into the half with a one point advantage on the Comets. Mayville State led in scoring in the first half by Sebastian Griffin. He had 12 points on 6 of 9 shooting. 8 points in the first half for J.C. Conahante as well. 7 points for Winder Joseph and 7 points for Thomas Gieske in the first half of play. Leading all scorers is David Winjet Jr. 6 of 7 from the floor including 2 of 2 from long range. 14 points and 4 rebounds in the first half for Winjet. 10 points for Lorenzo Anderson in the first staff. He did have two personal fouls, nine points for Man Man Baker, as well as a pair of assists. Some foul trouble on both sides. Troy Houghton with two personals in the first half, two personal fouls on Lorenzo Anderson, three personal fouls on Joseph for Mayville State. And on the other side, that's the only guy outside of Colby Dillenbeck, who also has three personal fouls. Everybody else just sitting at one or none for Mayville State. Comets 52% from the floor in the first half. Two of five from long range, five of six at the free throw line. Peru State, 46% from the field, 33% from long range on three of nine shooting, and then nine of 13 at the free throw line in that first half for the Bobcats. So Peru State leading Mayville State 42 to 41 at the end of the first half of play. Let's take a look at your bracket so far here in the NAIA Men's Basketball National Tournament. Evangel defeated Iowa Wesleyan to start the tournament today, 65 to 58, and Oklahoma Wesleyan and survived a scare from Concordia. The Bulldogs out of Nebraska, who Jamestown frequently sees in the G-Pack. Oklahoma Wesleyan 72, Concordia 70. Morningside out of the G-Pack, defeating Columbia 81-77. Indiana Tech victorious over IU South Bend, 82-57. Tougaloo with a 75-65 win over Texas A&M, Texarkana, 71-66. Pikeville defeats Huntington. Baker falls to Ottawa University out of Arizona, 80-78 on a last-second shot that went through for the Spirit. They are moving on to the second round. Kansas Wesleyan defeats IU Kokomo, 82-63. LSU Shreveport with an overtime victory over Tom. Thomas, 107 to 104. Indiana Wesleyan defeats Mid-American Nazarene, 78 to 70. St. Thomas is moving on to the second round with a win over the Masters, 84 to 61. Rio Grande defeats Marion, 79 to 75. Southeastern over Union, 82 to 76. Antelope Valley defeats Wayland Baptist, 77 to 68. And Grace victorious over Columbia. International out of South Carolina, 101 to 72. The final score there. Other games going on right now. Dort leading Bethel out of Indiana, 70 to 60. That game is in the second half of play. Georgetown is on top, 24 to 11 in the first half. Langston leading Southern Oregon, 27 to 20. Late stages of the first half there. And Sagu on top of Loyola, 19 to 9. That game in the early stages of the first half. Thomas Moore leading. Eastern Oregon 34 to 12 at the break and Life College leads Florida College 10 to 8. Here in Jamestown in the first round, Peru State 42, Mayville State 41 at the end of the first half of play. Our second game today features the University of Jamestown Jimmies, the host team and the number three seed in this side of the bracket. We're in the Liston quadrant. Three seed Jamestown, number 14 in Bethel out of Kansas. The Threshers coming in with a 20 and 10 overall record. Jamestown at 25 and 6 on the season. That'll be our second game here tonight. And I would guess that approximate start time will be pushed back to right about 8 p.m. Uh, here this evening. We had about a 50 minute delay before we got this one started due to a rim issue, a bent rim. They replaced the rim here at 
new marina. Uh, before we went through the starting lineups, we went through the starting lineups. They looked at the rim and said, all right, we're going to replace it now. Then we had another 10-minute warm-up period, uh, just a long process to officially get us underway. But finally feels like we're in the swing of the game fully between Peru State and Mayville State. At the half, Bobcats lead the Comets 42 to 41. Make sure you come back for our second game today. It will be on a different link on our YouTube, Jimmy Athletics. Again, Jimmy Athletics on YouTube. Subscribe, hit the bell. You'll be notified with UJ basketball, softball, baseball, hockey continuing. All those games at home will be on the Jimmy Athletics YouTube page, so don't miss out on that. 42-41 at the half. Peru State leading Mayville State. Lorenzo Anderson with 10 points, but it's David Winjet Jr., 14 points to lead all scorers in the first half. We'll come back in five minutes with second half action from Newman Arena right here on the gym and Jimmy Athletics on YouTube.
42-41, Peru State leading Mayville State as we get ready for second half action from Harold Newman Arena, Jamestown 107-1, AM 1400, and Jimmy Athletics on YouTube. I'm Jaron Matheny, glad that you are with us here on this Tuesday night in Jamestown. The Comets out of Mayville, North Dakota, just making a two-hour drive west here to Jamestown. Peru State on the other side, making the drive north the eight hour journey to get here and they got here yesterday a little bit behind on their practice schedule for yesterday uh, but roaring today and the Bobcats have a one point lead at the end of the first half Bruce State looking for their 25th win of the year. 24 wins is tied for the third most in Peru State basketball history. So how about that for Roman Gentry in his first season with that interim tag removed. Head coach Magruder on the other side. 25 wins in 30 tries this year for Mayville State. 42-41. Bobcats lead and have the basketball to begin the second half. Baker, Winjet. Anderson, Harris, and Houghton are on the floor. Starting five for the Bobcats. Joseph out there for Mayville State with Gieske, Griffin, Mitchell, and Kramer. Starting five for both sides. 20 minutes on the clock, and we are underway in the second half of this first round matchup in the national tournament for the NAIA men's basketball presented by Bology. Right-handed hook shot comes up short. Loose ball picked up underneath by Griffin, and Mayville State will have their first possession on offense, trying to regain the lead here to begin the second half. Comets had the lead for 16 of the 20 minutes in the first half of play felt like a majority for Mayville State off the screen Griffin dribbles goes to the hoop and lays it in plus the foul foul is charged to Houghton that's his third and he immediately comes out of this game just hasn't been able to stay out of foul trouble for Peru State and again, it's Sebastian Griffin just driving into whatever alley he wants to and getting close enough to the rim where he's creating contact and finishing. Griffin gets the and one free throw. 44-42, Mayville State leading Peru State here in the second half. Baker, left wing, handing off for Anderson. Screen, he goes against it. Underneath, Harris dribbling inside, nearly poked free. Back out up top, Baker slides in the lane. Bounce pass underneath, backdoor lay-in for Anderson is good for two. And we're knotted up at 44, just a minute into the second half of play here at Harold Newman Arena. Two offenses that average above 83 points a game. Mayville State best in the NAI this season at 93. Griffin, long range look. Front iron kicked out, Anderson defensive rebound. Bobcats with a basketball trying to regain the lead here in the second half. Volleyball line. Anderson goes to the far side of the floor, handing off for Baker at his knees. He recorrals. Baker across to the left wing, top of the key, and worked around right. Anderson with a head shake, 10 on the shot clock. He goes with the screen of Winjet. Dump back down, right side. Winjet cuts in, lays it up for two. And Winjet's got 16 points here in this game. 46 to 44, Peru State on top. Out to the right side, Mitchell. Looked in right elbow, gets it top of the key, handoff from Kramer to Griffin. Weave action up top, Gieske. Out right, handoff, Mitchell dribbles in, down to the left block, lay in, twirls down for two, and we're tied once again, 46-46. Two minutes off the clock here in the second half. Baker, bounce pass to Winjet, he pulls up, three-point line, takes the shot, this one twirls around and out. Comets can retake the lead. Joseph on a downhill drive. Baker shields him off. Out up top to Kramer. Deep look for Kramer, and good. Jamison Kramer from long range. 40% from deep this season. Comets regain the lead, 49 to 46. And how about the composure of these two first year head coaches at this level and in this environment? Neither one of them flinching in this moment. Pull up just out the side, the left elbow. Jump shot is short on the attempt from Trailer. Up the floor, Gieske, spinning baseline, dumps for Griffin, cutting, right-handed lay-in is off, and good contest by Winjet. Spins it up the floor to the near side, Baker, downhill, into the paint, 
Looks back right. Stead filtered back to the top. Now they'll dump down inside. Harris faces up. Baseline pass wrapped around. Trailer back up top. Winjet faked the three. He dribbles inside. Crashes in. We've got a foul plus the bucket. And one free throw for Winjet. Foul is tagged to Tane Mitchell, his second. First foul on the Comets here in the second half. Winjet at the free throw line with an and one opportunity. Trying to make it 49-49. Winjet and one, free throw is good. David Winjet, free throw line 85%. 49 all, 16-45 second half. Mitchell out to the left wing for Sebastian. Screen left from Kramer. He goes towards the top of the key instead. Dribbling downhill. Spins into the middle. Dumped off right. And we've got a foul beforehand underneath either on Baker. I'll actually call Anderson for the foul. That's his third. So Anderson with three. Howen with three. Anderson doesn't want to come out of this game, but he's going to as Wilson checks in. So Lorenzo Anderson comes off. Mayville inbounding in a 49-49 ball game. 16-37 second half inbound was tipped. Gieske going against Winjet, wraps around down towards the left block. Goes up, little fadeaway for Gieske. Tough bucket is good for two. Six foot three going up against six foot seven. Not easy to work in the paint there for Gieske, but he was the North Star player of the year for a reason. 16-20 second half, Comets up by two. Bobcats basketball back down towards the left, nearly a travel. Trailer left wing gets an open look from three and cashes it. Bobcats take the lead, 52 to 51 Peru State. Quickly up the other end, loose ball. Kramer couldn't corral and it's turned over. Wilson has to float it up the floor. Loose ball again. Joseph after it for Mayville State and he is fouled. He is fouled by Tedian. Or rather Harris will pick up this personal foul. He jumped on top of Joseph before he got to the ball, and that'll be the personal. Second on Harris. 15-55, second half, 52-51 Peru States. He may recall the shot clock here. Either that or they'll put 20 on it. No official change of possession, but with the foul, 20 on the shot clock for Mayville State. 52-51, Peru State on top, four minutes into the second half. Joseph towards the right wing. Griffin redirecting traffic up top. Dribbling right side, Griffin spinning, poke free by Baker. He helped defensively, gets the turnover. Mayville State gets back on the defensive end, and Baker slows it down. Between the two circles, dribbling out to the far side of the floor. Baker gets a screen left, curls it back right. Three for Harris is good. Jabril Harris, 42% from long range. And Peru State, for the first time in what feels like forever, is up by more than one possession. Joseph, top of the key, Kramer handing off left, Mitchell towards the arc right, now dribbles back, handing off for Gieske, going downhill against Baker, slides inside, used the contact to his advantage, and banks it in for two. And now we got a whistle, and Baker may have taken an elbow square towards the chest. Coach Gentry was not happy, but that wasn't an offensive foul. 15.04 second half. Baker is going to be coming out of this game for Peru State. Be checked on by the trainer. And now the Bobcats have to bring somebody into this game. So substitution. S.J. Allison Jr. is on. The senior out of Dallas, Texas. 
55-53. Peru State on top of Mayville State. Five minutes off the clock in the second half. Jimmies and Threshers waiting in the wings for their game to start. Winjet back off up top. Harris, left side, gives the handoff for Allison. Top of the key, Winjet, straightaway three. Kicked out, loose ball. Joseph saves it to Gieske. And Mayville State can tie or take the lead on this possession down the floor. Griffin handing off Joseph. He thought about the catch and shoot three. Dribbles right alley, hangs in the air, too strong on the lay in. Good defense from Wilson. Calm down here by Mayville State. Skyler Wilson 0 for 1 from the floor so far. Pulls up, left elbow extended, too strong. Offensive rebound to Harris and a foul underneath on Mayville State. It's Gieske. Second on Gieske, second team foul on the Comets. Baker is back onto the floor. Baker with nine points, four rebounds, four assists. Winjet Jr.'s got 19 points. Inbound to Harris on the right baseline, trying to back in against Mitchell. Back into the middle, spin move, Trailer puts it up, blocked, got it back, Trailer put back and he's fouled. Save on Trailer to the free throw line. Transfer from National Park College. 83% at the charity strength this season for Trailer. Junior at six foot five out of Atlanta, Georgia. Deep breath here in the countdown behind us. First free throw is in for Trailer. And Peru State, 68.5% at the line this season as a team. Right now, 11 of 15, right near that 75% clip. Second free throw, got them both to trailer. And it's back to a four-point lead for Peru State. 57-53, Bobcats. 14 minutes left in the second half. Right corner, Joseph hangs baseline, kicked out to the left side of the floor. Far side, Mitchell curls towards the top. Gieske on the back door looking for the basketball. Mitchell goes up instead, missed the lay-in. Ball tapped around and free. Harris grabs it. Near side, a look at Wilson instead. Baker goes straight to the rack. Left-handed lay-in is down. And a six-point lead for the Bobcats. 59-53, Peru State, 13-37. Second half, full timeout for Mayville State. No, they'll take a 30. We'll take the 30-second pause with them right back to Newman Arena after this. State leads Mayville State, 13 minutes, 37 seconds to go in the second half here from Harold Newman Arena, Jamestown 1071, and Jimmy Athletics on YouTube. Jaron Matheny, glad you are with us. First round action here in the national tournament for the NAIA. Bounce pass to the top of the key. Kramer looked right, goes left instead for Griffin. He gets a screen. Griffin going inside, and he got to his spot, beat him around the corner, and lays it in for two. Back to a four-point ball game for Mayville State. Number six, Peru State. Number 11, Mayville State. Here in the national tournament first round, we're inside the Liston quadrant in Jamestown. Winjet to the left, backing in Harris against his defender, Kramer. Hook shot over the top, falls for two and it's back to a six-point lead. Wilson applying some pressure in the full court for Peru State. Pass goes along the midcourt line. Griffin inside, foul, and doesn't twirl home on the finish, but two free throws for Sebastian Griffin. And right now, Griffin just finding his way into the lane, and not a lot of help from Peru State to stop it. Two free throws for Griffin, 66% this year. And front iron out on the first. 
Allison Jr. back on for the Bobcats. Both Anderson Houghton on the bench right now for Peru State. Second free throw rattles in for Griffin. Sebastian Griffin's got 18 points. He had 27 points this year against Northwestern College in Orange City, Iowa. 61-56 Bobcats. 12-40 second half. Peru State basketball operating right to left. Allison off for Harris into the right side corner. Winjet back to the top of the key. Harris filters out left. Trailer for three. Rims off. Loose ball. Kramer had it poked free. Allison Jr. foul and one. And Peru State is taking the momentum out of this building right now. Mayville State's probably got more fans in here just because of the easier travel. But the Comet fans are silent at the moment as S.J. Allison Jr. hits the free throw line. Tedian back in for the Bobcats. Dylan Beck back on the floor for Mayville State. one free throw for S.J. Allison Jr. Got it? 64-56, Bobcats on top. 12-20 second half, Comets ball. Underneath, Gieske was calling for the basketball initially. Griffin dribbling right side, spins into the lane again. Reverse lay-in doesn't go. Rebound, Dylan back. His left-handed put back does finish. 64-58. Eight minutes off the clock in the second half. Peru State has extended their advantage to six. Largest lead for the Bobcats is seven today. Winjet Jr. off for Allison Jr. Dribble in, free throw line, pull up, jump shot, too strong. Joseph on the rebound and a reach in foul is going to be charged to Allison. Mayville State will inbound in front of the Bobcats bench. Fifth team foul on Peru State comes at 11.48 in the second half. Comets basketball, kind of hot day to the scores table. Gieske, top of the key to Joseph at the volleyball line, worked off left wing. Blackshire looks in, spins a pass to Gieske down low. Help coming underneath. Gieske musters it up, missed it, tapped around. He gets it back, going back up. A foul beforehand, and it's on the floor against Peru State. That's the sixth team foul now on the Bobcats. in for Joseph. Jabril Harris back into the game for Tedian. He just picked up his second. Kanahate to inbounds. Towards the far side of the floor. Goes in to that near side block. Gieske tapped back to him. Spins baseline. Help coming from Baker. And he swiped it out of bounds. And man, man, Baker frustrated. He wanted the basketball there. Wilson in for Allison. Gentry, joined by Damian Witte. He's the interim assistant coach. Ten on the shot clock for Mayville State. Kanahate, bounce pass inside. Good look for Dylan Beck. A nice assist by J.C. Kanahate. 64 to 60. Bobcats still in front. 11.05 second half. Peru State basketball. Man, man, Baker on the near side of the floor gets a screen from Harris to the top of the key. Dump down straight inside. Harris waits for his defender to get off his feet. Right-handed lay in two. And it's back to a six-point lead for the Bobcats. Mayville State has not really shot the outside the three ball and spin more downhill action. Here's a three for Blackshire right on cue. It's off the money. Baker spin pass up the floor. Trailer back out. Baker looking around. Good separation. Screen left from Harris. Baker inside. Kicks out left wing. Trailer catch and shoot three. Huge shot for Peru State. And the Bobcats have their largest lead at nine points with 10-20 to go in the second half. Griffin dribbling in. Down to the right block. Out there again. Missed the curl lay in this time. Baker picks it up. Bobcats trying to go to double digits in the advantage. Set their motion. Baker, near side corner, stops the left elbow, kick out, right wing three for Wilson, rims off. 
Ski board, under 10 minutes to play in the second half. 69 to 60, Peru State. Pass was deflected up in the air and out of bounds. It'll belong to the Comets. Mitchell's back into the game. Peru State with Houghton back in. Anderson also returning. Mitchell back in for Mayville. 9.49, second half, bounce pass into the right corner, up top. Mitchell to the left wing, kind of hot take, gets a screen right from Dylan Beck. Stops back to the left corner, Gieske inside for Dylan Beck. He spins against Harris, left hand again, good for two. 69-62, Bobcats have the lead on Mayville State. The Comets have not gone away quietly here in the second half. Baker gets a screen from Harris. They'll create the switch. Baker dribbling in on Dylan Beck. Ball poked free initially. Anderson to the right corner. Trailer dumps down inside for Houghton. Just a size advantage right now for Peru State. Back to the left corner. Harris for three. The big man hits another. Jabril Harris from the outside. 72-62. Largest lead for Peru State. Blackshire straight inside. Missed the double clutch lay-in, though. Anderson rebound. Weaving through traffic, Anderson goes straight in. He's fouled, and two free throws for Lorenzo Anderson as body came down on the right leg of Anderson. He's down on the floor on the baseline and back to his feet. Two free throws for Lorenzo Anderson. Not sure why everybody has vacated the premises here or why Anderson's walking past midcourt. 72-62, Bobcats. Lorenzo Anderson with two free throws upcoming. Other scores right now. Dort leading by nine with 30 seconds to play. Sagu's up by four at Loyola. That game is at the half. First free throw through for Anderson. Langston leading Southern Oregon by 10. Thomas Moore up by 17 on Eastern Oregon. Faulkner leading Shawnee State by four. That game in the middle stages of the first half. St. Xavier up on William Penn, nine to eight in the first five minutes of that game. Anderson, free throw number two to try and make it a 12 point lead which he does. Largest lead on either side today. Peru State is up by 12. 8.50 and counting in the second half. UJ women tied with the IU South Bend women in Montana currently, 38 to 38. Mitchell, left wing, top of the key. Blackshire works off to the right side. Blackshire attacking Anderson, too strong on the lay-in. Houghton on the defensive rebound and a foul by Blackshire in the backcourt. That's the sixth team foul on Mayville State. Eight and a half minutes to go, and right now you're hitting danger time for the Comets. 74-62, Bobcats on top of Mayville State. Baker dribbling towards the right elbow, spins back out up top. Harris the three, this one's off. Loose ball, offensive rebound to Winjet. He dribbles, hangs in the air, left-handed finish not there. Offensive rebound again to Winjet and they'll reset the offense back out at the UJ logo. Baker to the far side of the floor. 10 on the shot clock, eight minutes remaining in the second half. Anderson. Pull up, left side, through on the 18-foot jumper for Lorenzo Anderson, 76-62. Bobcats again extending their lead. Inside underneath to Silva, spins around Anderson, and one. Fourth foul on Lorenzo Anderson. He's got his hands in the air right now, can't believe it. It's a blocking foul called. The official's telling Anderson to put his hands down. Looked like a chicken wing from De Silva to get around Anderson. And now Coach Gentry's got to be careful. He continues to talk with the official. And one free throw. De Silva hits. 
76-65. Full court pressure from Mayville State. Baker sends it all the way up ahead to Harris. Right side, Anderson dribbles straight in. Gets the foul call. And now Lorenzo Anderson to the free throw line on the other side of the floor. As he bumped into Mitchell. 7.33, second half. Lorenzo Anderson at the line shooting two. Walked all the way over to Coach Gentry. 11 point Bobcat lead, 7.33 on the clock in the second half. Anderson first is through and right through the nylon. 77-65 Bobcats. Pace of play is slowed drastically here with free throws. Deep breath by Anderson. Second attempt. He goes one for two, rolled off the front of the iron. 12 point game, seven and a half minutes remaining here in the first round. Mayville State trying to keep their season going. Bobcats trying to do the same and move on to the second round. Pull up to Silva, off the heel, Winjet rebound. And this Bobcats team just has so much length and size to it, it's hard to get those loose balls. Three subs waiting to come in for Mayville State. Screen right, Baker lost the ball on the floor, picked up by De Silva. He can cut the lead to 10. Step inside, missed the lay-in, put back for Blackshire is through, and it's 77-67. Under seven minutes remaining. Full court pressure, kind of hot day, slaps down on Baker's hand. And it's one and one free throws up the other side for Man Man Baker. Skis back on for Mayville State. Griffin returns as well as Winder Joseph. One and one free throws for Man Man Baker as he adjusts his shoes before stepping to the free throw line. Bobcats don't want to put anyone in the lane right now. Man Man Baker, one and one free throws. 76% this season. Front end up. And through. Baker now with 12 points for number 12. And senior out of Aurora, Colorado. Second attempt. One for two. Free throws could be crucial late for Peru State. 78-67. They lead the comments. Joseph trying to go to work on the baseline, near side. Gieske handing off. Joseph head fake on the three, dribbles in, and a reach-in foul on Houghton. It'll be one-on-one -one free throws for Mayville State, and Houghton's got to be careful here. You just can't be that animated after a foul. It's the fourth on Houghton as Trailer returns. And I get it. It wasn't a lot of contact if you're Houghton. And he just feels like he's just been on the bench way too long today, which is part of it. One and one for Joseph, 75% this year. Front end missed it short. Offensive rebound, right-handed way in through for Mitchell. Back to single digits in the deficit column for Mayville State. Full court pressure, Baker for Winjet. Four to get across the timeline. The pass ahead to Baker. He drives into the paint, stops, and flips back out up top. Offense resets for Peru State midway through the shot clock. 6.20 to go, second half. Nine-point ball game. Baker off a screen right. Winjet into the right corner. Trailer, right wing, feeds up top to Harris. Left side, Anderson. One on the shot clock, deep three for Anderson, and one. Three is good. And we're shooting an and one free throw on top of it. Kramer didn't like the foul. That's his third. And now Lorenzo Anderson with another free throw. Peru State, free throw number 24 coming up. Anderson, seven of eight. Everybody on the floor right now for the Bobcats is in double figures. And one free throws off. 
Those are opportunities. Peru State may be looking at later in this game. Six minutes to go, 81-69. Joseph, top of the key, can't get it. Loose ball, Harris to it. Flip back for Winjet, back to Baker on the far side of the floor. Pressure in the backcourt, but Baker breaks it. Looking ahead, Baker contains his dribble, spins himself up top, driving inside, bounce pass underneath on the baseline. Winjet goes back up, blocked partially. Harris rebound, right hook shot, back in and good for two. 14 point lead for Peru State, five and a half minutes to go. Gieski straight inside, two hand flush. Timeout, Comets, 83-71, Peru State on top. Bobcats starting to smell the second round. They'll need a strong finish here. Mayville State looking for some points in bunches. 5.27 to play, 83-71. Peru State leads Mayville State. Final 5.27 coming your way after this. Three seventy-one. Peru State leading Mayville State. Five minutes, 27 seconds to play here in the second half from Harold Newman Arena. Jamestown 1071 AM 1400, as well as Jimmy Athletics on YouTube. I'm Jared Matheny. Glad to be with you. Peru State basketball out of the full timeout by the Comets. And we'll see full court pressure from Mayville State. The problem is, Man Man Baker doesn't waste a whole lot of time getting across the timeline. He sees the floor very well. You can tell that by his assist numbers alone, but he just is very patient. He's not, doesn't really care about the trap. He breaks it himself this time. Far side of the floor, curl pass inside. Comets have moved to a zone look defensively. Baker back towards the UJ logo. Against Mitchell, out up high. Baker dribbling left side. Top of the key, deep three for Trailer. Too strong, rebound to Gieske. Set up the floor, Dillon back underneath. Reverse lay-in is blocked by Harris. Back towards the Mayville State bench. We're under five minutes to play in this one. 83-71, Bobcats in front. UJ women are leading by nine currently in the third quarter against IU South Bend. Joseph looking to inbound, goes straight inside. Dylan Beck floats it back towards the top. Now Gieski, baseline, fell down. Harris ties up the basketball. It'll stay with Mayville State. I don't know why Peru State's pointing the other way. The arrow is clearly here. 19 on the shot clock for the Comets. Inbound towards the right corner, Griffin. Wraps around left for Joseph. Stops, kick, left corner, Gieski, baseline drive. Went up to try and hammer it home. Reverse lay and attempt instead is hammered. And now Gieski headed to the free throw line. The foul is on Man Man Baker. That's, oh, rather they'll call the foul on Harris. 22 instead of 12. It's the ninth team foul on Peru State. Thomas Gieski, two free throws upcoming. Winjet and Harris will flop sides in the lane. Two free throws for Thomas Kieske. And the first drops in. 83-72. Far from being over. But for Mayville State, got to have some sort of push here in the next two and a half minutes 
to get you back within that four point window. It's back to 10, Gieske hits both free throws. 440 second half, Winjet floats the ball high up over the top for Anderson, into the middle, trailer backs down inside, his runner falls through, and it's back to a 12 point lead. Right now, Mayville State can't get a stop on the defensive end, that's the main issue. Gieske downhill, right alley, bumps into the defender trailer, and two free throws upcoming for Gieske. 70% at the line this year as a team for Mayville State. The Comets today at 12 of 13. Stats page having some trouble refreshing here. First free throw right in for Gieske. And Mayville State making the most of their opportunities at the line right now. Gieske up to 16 points. Second attempt. Missed it, rimmed off. 85-74, Bobcats, 420, second half. Baker back to Winjet, across the timeline, and now we'll see if Peru State wants to slow this game down a little bit as well. You can limit possessions here as this game gets later. Winjet, left wing, back towards the right side. Harris dumps into the right corner, up fake. Anderson steps up to the wing for the three, just rimmed off. Gieski rebound. Here's your opportunity if, you, if you're Mayville State. You just got to stop. You got to find a way to get a bucket on this end. Griffin, he's been their go-to guy downhill. He runs it, missed it. Loose ball, picked up by Harris. Out the other side, Anderson looking ahead. Floats it into the right corner for Winjet. Twirl back towards the top. Man-man Baker and a timeout for Peru State. 342 second half, 85-74. Full timeout for the Bobcats. We'll take the one-minute pause with them. Peru State leading by 11, although Coach Gentry doesn't look too pleased at the moment. We're back to Newman Arena right after this. Five seventy-four. Bobcats with a lead on the Comets. Three minutes and 42 seconds left in the second half. Savon Trailer talking to the middle schoolers behind us who wants something ridiculous, I'm sure. Trailer inbounding the top of the key for Anderson. 20 to work offensively here for Peru State. Anderson, volleyball line. Drifts, drifts back towards the midcourt logo. Pass out to the far side of the floor. Baker had to pick it up. Shot clock down to six. Baker dribbles in on Gieske. Got him up in the air. And Baker now with two free throws upcoming. That puts Peru State into the double bonus. And everybody backs out of the lane. They just want to get back defensively here to the Bobcats. Man, man, Baker. First free throw is in. And Peru State has been to the line a lot. 86-74, that was the 25th free throw attempt for the Bobcats here tonight. Second free throw for Baker. Gets them both. 
13 point Peru State lead. 3.20 to go. Mayville State's got to hit the gas now. A little bit of full court pressure from the Bobcats to try and slow them down. Inside drive, dumped off left. Dylan Beck, left handed finish over the top for two. Back to an 11 point ball game. 3.10 to go. And right now, Peru State is playing the correct way. They're just going to try and slow this game down if they can. Instead, it's Baker who bumps right into a body of Dylan Beck. And it's two more free throws coming. And that is it for Colby Dylan Beck. His fifth personal foul. And now Mayville State to bring in a sub. And it's Kramer who checks in for Mayville State. Two free throws for Baker. 303 second half, 87-76. Baker hits the first. 15 points for Man Man Baker. 20 points for Lorenzo Anderson. He leads all scorers currently. Baker's second attempt. Got them both. Big free throws for Peru State. We're down to the final three minutes here in the first round. 89-76. Bobcats have the lead on the Comets. Kramer handing off towards the left side. Joseph left wing. Three. Too strong. Loose ball. Tapped out. It belongs to Mayville State. So underneath. Inbound coming for the Comets. They'll give in to Kramer on the right block. Hands off right corner. Joseph around the arc going downhill. Bounced it off on the inside for Mitchell. Poked free. Houghton spins it up the floor for Anderson. Stepped through in the lane. Tried to dump it back and lost it. Gieske back to the far side. Mitchell going downhill. Runner good. One of the contact there. Two and a half minutes to go. Second half. 11 point lead for Peru State. Winjet talking to his team as he came down the floor, saying we have to clean that up. Baker, near side in front of his own bench, down to 13 on the shot clock. Fake the screen from Winjet. Baker for Houghton, left elbow, spinning inside, kick back out up top, extra pass. Trailer for three, shorts, picked up, two minutes to go. Griffin pushes up ahead. Right into Baker, it's a block. And the foul is on the floor against Man Man Baker. No, no bucket there. Foul is on the floor. Two free throws, though, upcoming for Sebastian Griffin. It's the third foul on Baker. First free throw for Griffin. It's too strong. 155 to play. Harris is in for Houghton. Jimmy's in Threshers waiting. It'll be about an hour behind from when we were scheduled to play. Second free throw goes through for Griffin. 89-79. Winjet inbounds. Joseph throws it back in. Take away from Mayville State. Into the left corner. Joseph extra pass. Griffin left wing three. Rims out. Baker rebound, and then he's fouled immediately by Mitchell. And it's back to the other end for free throws for the Bobcats. Fourth foul charge to Mitchell. Two attempts for Baker on the other end. Coach Gentry and his side, it's just going to come down to making free throws on this end taking care of the basketball and just don't turn it over and you can make your free throws this game will be over and you'll be headed on to the second round first free throw is in for Baker 90 to 79 Bobcats with the lead 22 of 29 at the free throw line for Peru State Baker's second attempt and he's got 17 points. Does Man Man Baker back to a 12-point lead for Peru State. Comets basketball. Top of the key, Kramer handing off. 
And there it is, straight inside again. Easy lay-in with a left hand goes down for Griffin. The seas are parting. I'm not sure what the action is for Mayville State, but whoever's playing Peru State next will say, certainly take a look at that. Down to a minute 25 to go. Baker trapped up top to Winjet. Back left side for Baker. Mayville State will be down to about a minute to work after this possession. Trailer spins off to the left side. Kick out left corner. Winjet fake the three. Shot clock down to six and five. And Winjet just got bailed out there with a foul call. Winjet to shoot two free throws. And he's a little gimpy right now after going down. Foul is on Mitchell, his fifth. Tane Mitchell, a sophomore for Mayville State. Comet's not giving up hope yet, but with the way that Peru State has hit their free throws today, just need a couple more. Winjet first is right through. 92-81, Bobcats in front. Second free throw upcoming. Winjet goes two for two. Halton is in for Harris. And Winjet wants a sub two, so Harris will actually stay in. Don't know if he just clanked his knee when he went down onto the floor there. Roll the ball up ahead. Joseph picks it up. Down to a minute five remaining. Winder Joseph, bounce pass towards the left, taken away by Anderson. He's out the other side. Anderson rises and slams it through. Under a minute to go. Bobcats lead 95-81. Now 95-86 as the three is through from the left wing. And a nine point lead for Peru State with 53 and a half seconds to go. Timeout for the Comets. It's a full timeout, we'll take the pause. Make it 95 to 84 on the scoreboard. Somebody got a little bit happy. 11 point lead for the Bobcats, 53 and a half seconds to go. For Mayville State, you gotta have back-to-back -back quick turnovers here in combination with some made threes. It's Winjet. Looks like he's already done for the night tonight. Get the ice out and throw those down on the left knee. Winjet is having a lot of problems right now you can tell he's kind of in some agonizing pain at the moment with that left knee. They'll ice it up, but he just looks like he is in some major pain after hitting the deck. Lorenzo Anderson with a big time jam. 95-84, Peru State in front. Jimmy fans listening out there, UJ women lead by seven with eight minutes to go in the fourth quarter. It's Coach Sankey trying to get his first win with Jamestown in the national tournament. Full court pressure for Mayville State, inbound to Baker, goes back to Trailer. Coming up the far side of the floor, Trailer stops, pokes free, turned over. Up ahead, Griffin goes straight inside and one. Oh boy, 42 seconds to go, and Mayville State makes it a nine point deficit. Yeah. Trailer helped back to his feet by Harris. And one free throw upcoming for Griffin. Sebastian Griffin with 22 points, and he hits the free throw. Take that. 25 points for Griffin today. Full court pressure again. Anderson in the backcourt. Nearly trapped. Throws into the middle. Trailer breaks the timeline and got fouled by Gieske. Save on Trailer. Two free throws on the other end. 95-87 Bobcats. It does just come down to free throws here for Peru State. Save on Trailer. An 83% clip this year.
first free throw is in. Back to a nine point lead for Peru State. Just continues, to, they, they just continue to get to the free throw line. 25 of 32. Second attempt, Trailer gets them both. 97-87. Joseph letting it roll towards midcourt. Baker backs up. Joseph picks it up, and here we go. Quick pull, deep three for Joseph. Offensive rebound, Gieske lays it back in for two. Got to have a foul here if you're Mayville State or a stop, some sort of turnover. Baker fakes the pass, looking up ahead, pass back to Trailer, and a reach-in foul. This time on Griffin. 22.9. 97-89. So save on trailer. Two more free throws coming. First is in. 98-89. For Mayville State, 25 and 5 this season with interim head coach Brandon McGruder. He doesn't get the job. I don't know why he wouldn't. I just can't imagine there's anybody who would have been able to do what he did this year with this group. Joseph picks it up across the timeline. Screen from Gieske. Joseph kicks out right corner. Blackshire three. Can't hit. Houghton kicks it out towards the corner. It's out of bounds. Still Mayville State basketball, but only 14 and a half seconds remain. Comets inbound. Blackshire up top. Griffin back to the left corner. Blackshire three is in. Timeout Mayville State with 9.1 seconds to go, 99-92. And you, know, you can call the timeout here and, and try to create some sort of magic, but Mayville State's got one timeout left. Um, and Peru State has taken care of the ball. They've hit their free throws. This game is all but wrapped up here. 99-92, Jimmy's and Threshers, University of Jamestown and Bethel College out of Kansas will face off next. Be right about the top of the hour for that game. We'll hear from University of Jamestown men's basketball head coach Danny Neville on our pregame show. Luke Anderson will join me courtside for Jimmy men's basketball coming up after the conclusion of this one. 9.1 on the clock. 99-92, Bobcats leading the Comets. Starting to see some more people filter in for this game. It is spring break, so no students for the most part. Peru State, catch the ball, don't turn it over, hit your free throws on the other end, and then just play some sort of semblance of full court defense so they can't roll it all the way up the floor like they have been. Ninety-nine, ninety-two. Houghton can run the baseline. And even if he turns it over here to Mayville State, it's still, you've got to have buckets in bunches. Trailer, it's a foul. Looking for a jump ball is Blackshire. Seven seconds to go. Other end, trailer, two free throws coming. He just looks frustrated <laughs> right now. I think Peru State's feeling the same thing that kind of most people in this building are. If this game's over, it's the national tournament. You don't want your season to come to an end, but realizing the moment here, this one's wrapped up, and Mayville State's season's going to come to a close at 25-6. and six. Bobcats will go to 25-7 and seven and are headed for the second round of the national tournament. Trailer hits the first. 192. Bobcats hit the century mark. 38th free throw of the night is good. 31 of 38 at the line. There's your difference today. Comets, final four seconds will run off their season. Joseph from midcourt missed it, and that's it. 
Peru State is moving on in the national tournament to the second round. The Bobcats defeat the Comets 101 to 92 here at Harold Newman Arena. We'll come back with your postgame stats after this. Comets season comes to a close at 25 and 6 overall. Bobcats are moving on to the second round, 25 and 7 on the year. to the final score. Peru State is headed to the second round of the national tournament as the Bobcats defeat Mayville State 101-92. Both sides shooting near 50% from the floor today, but Peru State 31 of 38 at the free throw line. They attempted 20 more free throws tonight than Bethel did, and the Bobcats come out on top. 22 points for Lorenzo Anderson, 21 for David Winjet Jr. We'll see if he's okay for tomorrow. Trailer with 20 points, Man Man Baker with 18, Jabril Harris with 12. On the other side, Sebastian Griffin leads the charge with 25 points for the Comets. Gieske with 18, 10 points for both Joseph and Dylan Beck. The Comets season comes to a close at 25 and 6 overall. The Bobcats are 25 and 7 and will meet the winner of our next game. Jamestown at taking on Bethel College out of Kansas. The Threshers and the Jimmies will come back with your pregame show for that after this short pause here on 1071 AM 1400 and Jimmy Athletics on YouTube.